Now all you have to do is just drag that image in. Right click, paste in two. Here we're just going to upload the image. Okay, so it's given us four pretty nice results and we're going to actually use jump object here. Yo, this is Sam from LYH Studio and today we're making this. Let's go. As always, we're creating our document first. So eight and a half by 11 inches, we're gonna have portrait orientation pages, two different pages, facing pages checked. We're gonna start on number two, column, 1667 column gutter standard and then we're gonna do 6.25 inch margins which is a little bit wider than we like but I do like it that way uh, and then we're gonna just turn up the bleed to a standard 0.125 and just go ahead and create that now the important thing about any layout that we don't talk about enough is the image the image really makes or breaks your layout now we can spice it up with a lot of text but the image has to be good for this one I'm gonna be using this image over here Sorry, not this one. I'm gonna be using this image over here. Now it's got a nice subject and a very nice color in the background. Okay, first we're gonna anchor this image with a frame. Now we're not gonna use the rectangular frame tool this time as you guys are familiar with. We're actually gonna be using the pen tool. So the pen tool gives us a lot more flexibility in what we can create in terms of the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click where I want this frame to be. And you see this, we're going to actually create the frame that has a nice special shape. So if I want this to, you know, have a little divot like this, I can go ahead and just do that. Now, don't worry too much about getting this perfect. We can go back using the direct selection tool, which is shortcut key A. And then you can actually select these little points and then you can adjust this curve. So if I go back and I click on this, I can adjust the different anchors and I can also adjust where the point actually is. So make this something that's smooth. And guys, as always, I recommend that the least amount of clicks you do on these things to make the least amount of anchors, the better and the smoother your curve's going to look. So that is our frame. All we have to do is drag our image into the frame. So pick it up where you have it in your file explorer or your navigator. I'm actually not sure what it is on Mac, I'm sorry. Uh, and then all you have to do is just drag that image in. Now, this next part is really important. So we want this image to actually expand itself so that it's all the way on the entirety of the page. So if I zoom out here, we really wanna take up this entire page with this image. So if I double click into this image frame, or if I just click on center where this circle pops up, you can see that there's a frame on the outside that tells me how big this picture is. And if I drag this out and in, you can see that my image also changes and I can move it inside this frame. So we want to make sure that this outer frame encompasses our entire page. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just so that the image is a little bit clearer. And again, I'm making sure that it is at a place where I think will work really well. So maybe something like this. Let me just go ahead and hit W to preview that. Uh, you can see that there is a black outline here. So I'm going to click on this and just get rid of that through our strokes. And now it's gone. I might adjust these control points a little bit more uh, just to make everything look a little bit smoother. But you guys do whatever fits your picture. All right, that looks pretty good. Next, we're going to put some text here that will blend right into the image. So I'm going to go ahead and drag out a type tool. And then I'm just going to put whatever text that you think fits right here in this blank space. So here I'm typing Y settle for less. And we're going for Y settle for less when you can get more, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this into the font that we wanna use. And it's important that you guys use an extra bold or a black font so that it's super thick and that the image can bleed right into it. So important that you use a thicker font over here. Now I want this to be three lines. So I'm gonna press enter in the text box so that it is in three different lines. And I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger to visualize what we have here. Now this part is not super important because we'll be turning this into outlines. Uh, which is what I'll show you guys in a bit. But I think it is important since we're looking to make another title on the other side to just make a copy of this text since, well, you'll see in a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and go into type, create outlines, 
and then we're actually going to ungroup this. So now it is in different objects just by itself. And then let's adjust the spacing between the two just because I feel like it's a little bit too wide, the spacing in between the actual characters uh, or the different lines. So let's go with something like this. And then we're going to go into object, path, and just make this into a compound path, meaning that whatever picture I put in here, it's going to function as one singular frame, except having the W as a frame, the H as a frame, and the Y as a frame, etc. So I can actually drag this out and scale this as much as I want because it is now an object rather than a text. And I can go ahead and just now put this image in. In order to do that, I'm going to click into this image till you see that secondary border show up. And you're just gonna copy this. So right click, copy. We're gonna exit out. And then we're gonna click on the compound path that we just made, right click, and make sure you click paste in two. So wherever the picture is in this compound frame, it's going to paste it right in that same location. Now the text is a little bit small, so I'm gonna adjust it a little bit. And you guys can see that when I adjust the text, it's going to adjust the image underneath so that we don't have the problem of having to, you know, paste it in every single time. So if I do a little preview, that looks pretty good. It looks like it's part of the image itself. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side, but we really want an image on the other side just to anchor everything down. Unfortunately, I don't have another image of the same model, which is kind of what I want. So we're going to just generate it. In the age of AI, let's just go ahead and do that. And we're going to generate a set of images from this model using APOB, which is today's sponsor. Uh, and it's basically where you take a image, you upload it, and then it'll generate different images, or you can create your own model. So here we're on apob.ai, uh, and then we're going to create a portrait uh, model using AI. Here we're just going to upload the image of my model. We want this to be realistic, uh, casual look, sunny day. 9 by 16 resolution looks good, and we're just gonna hit generate. Okay, so it's given us four pretty nice results. I think this one is the one that I would want to use the most. So we're gonna go ahead and upscale this, and then download it. We can also do a bunch of complete sets for our models. So for example, if I go to LinkedIn, and I just do a professional headshot and click generate. There we go, we got our professional headshot. And with any of these generated, we can make it into a video, just by clicking generate video. Something like that, pretty fast, pretty easy. Uh, if you guys would like to give this a try, make sure you head over to apob.ai. And if you use my code LH15, you'll get 15% discount. So give that a shot if you guys want, and let's get back into InDesign. So now that we're back in InDesign, we're just gonna go ahead and right click on the rectangular frame tool, and I'm gonna give it a ellipse frame tool. So selecting that right here. And then we're going to drag out a nice circle and we're going to place the generated image that we just had into this. Drag that in. And we're going to give this a nice fitting. So right click, fitting, fit frame proportionally. And we're just gonna drag that down so that her face is in the middle there. And we can move this around wherever we want to. But next we're going to anchor this with the other side of the image to complete why settle for less when you can get more kind of deal. And that's why we saved this text box is so we can edit this uh, a lot easier than if we had to make it from scratch again. So here I'm just gonna do something like get more and we're gonna spice this up with a little bit of a period at the end uh, and we're gonna do the same thing. So type create outline and we're going to drag this out so that it's a lot bigger than whatever's going on over here. Maybe it's around the same, uh, so a little bit smaller there. And then we're going to right click, ungroup, select both lines and then again, we're gonna go into object path and make compound path. So we're gonna take this image by double clicking into this frame, copy, so I'm gonna control copy, exit out of the frame, click on your new text, right click and paste into. So it's a nice continuation from the other side and I really like how that looks. I'm gonna make sure that there is no fill on here just so we don't get a black outline, but that looks pretty good and we can even make this uh, interact with our letters here a little bit. And we can also send this to the back by arranging send to back. And you can see that my letter will pop up a little bit more. And that's exactly what we want. So all you have to do now is just populate this page with some text. And we're gonna do that by going to the text tool. And I'm just gonna create some placeholder text for now. I'm gonna go into text frame options and just change the number of texts 
to two columns. And that's all we're going to do. Then I'm just gonna hit this with some placeholder text, change it to a font that I like to use. So here, let's just go with the simple Arial. So let's go Arial regular. And then we're gonna make this into just a smaller 10 point font. To finish it off, I like to give it a little bit of text on this side as well, just a little bit of a short blurb. Uh, and then we can also give it a little bit of a quote. So I'm gonna do that by going into our type tool creating a nice text box here. And then just put in whatever highlighted text or quote you want to put. So here I'm gonna go with something like this. I made it a little bit bolder and I made it uh, a lot bigger because it's a highlighted text. And we're going to go ahead and just give this a little bit of a text wrap. Now, before we give anything a text wrap uh, in terms of text, we want to give it a little bit of a buffer zone so that it's not right up to the text beside it. So we're gonna go into the text frame options and just give it a bit of an inset spacing. Now we don't wanna give it too much. You can see that there's a preview over here, but something like a 1. Uh, 0.1875 works pretty well for us here. Now I'm gonna put this up here and you're going to go into window and you're just going to pull up the text wrap. And we're going to actually use the jump object here just so that it basically wraps the entire row or the entire line around the thing that you want to wrap it around instead of just the shape of the text. And that really balances out the page. So I might make this a little bit lower uh, and then make our title a little bit bigger. But obviously feel free to play around with this however you think makes sense. And just to complete the look, we're gonna give this a little bit of a more angelic glow, softer look. Uh, so we're gonna go into to the effects tab. If you guys don't have this, go up to window and turn on effects. Then we're going to mouse right over down to the bottom here and add an effect. We're gonna do the inner glow. So let's add a little bit of a size to this thing. You can see that there is a bit of a glow on the inside of these letters. And to complement that effect, we're giving it a basic feather. So if I go into the basic feather and turn it down a little bit, just, just want a tiny bit of that effect. And then we're gonna hit okay. And there we go, that's something that's super simple to do that anybody can do that we just created in basically just 10 minutes. So if you guys have learned anything new, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. Uh, but otherwise, let me know what you guys wanna see next in the comments. And I hope you guys have a great summer and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.